Mr. Flips. Mr. Flips. Mr. Flips. Mr. Flips. Mr. Flips. Welcome to this video about tone and mood in texts. Um, it is important to be aware and able to, to identify and describe the tone or the mood in a text because that often opens the door into more subtlety and into other layers of a text. So let's try together to explore what that might look like. Being able to discern these two layers of a text might allow you to penetrate a text more deeply uh, and pull out details that maybe otherwise would have uh, slipped by. So let's commence with a bit of a definition of tone. Tone is the author's attitude towards the subject matter that they're dealing with. Um, I've written a few other words here just to kind of emphasize that we're dealing with the author, particularly in terms of a non-fiction text. If we're dealing with a poem, we tend to speak about the speaker in the, in the poem. Uh, and obviously in a work of fiction, we usually have a narrator leading us through the text. And it's their attitude towards the audience, the subject, or the character in the text. And it is important when you're dealing with poetry and prose to distinguish between the voice of that speaker or narrator and the voice of the author, which might not necessarily be the same. So what are the tools then available to a writer when they're trying to create a certain tone in the text? Uh, one of the main access paths is diction. Uh, so when they sit down, they choose specific words to convey a particular tone. Um, so choosing the right synonym there becomes really important when it comes to, to making diction choices. Um, they can also use modal verbs to, to express a certain level of certitude and therefore convey either assertiveness or un, uh, insecurity about the subject matter. So they use, you could use modal verbs like might, may or could. Uh, as a contrast to, to the words will and must, which are much stronger in certitude when coupled with a finite verb. Um, you can also use demonstrative, <coughs> excuse me, demonstrative pronouns such as this and therefore to emphasize and pinpoint and direct. Um, likewise, certain adjectives and adverbs have the function of, of highlighting and stressing points in the text. Uh, and obviously we can do these things through syntax. Uh, a long winding sentence might create uh, a formal tone or it might serve to elaborate and slow down a text where short um, sentences, perhaps even truncated sentences or hyperbaton, or hyperbaton I should say, uh, can add extra stress to syntactic elements and therefore um, stress certain aspects. When it comes to describing uh, the tone of a text, uh, there's obviously a plethora of words you could be using. Uh, I'm not going to go through them. I've given you a, a selection here. You can certainly um, go off and Google other words to describe tone, or you can come up with your own lists. Uh, but here are some words that you could use to describe tone. If you want to have a look and, and jot them down, then obviously stop the video here and write them down before moving on. Mood, on the other hand, is something slightly different. It's the atmosphere experienced by the reader. So if you think of tone as what the writer or speaker is using, mood is what that tone, the impact that tone has on us. It's the atmosphere experienced by us as readers. Um, so obviously tone is one of the core ways of creating a particular mood. You can also do it through a selection of, of certain types of imagery. Uh, you can use it by setting a scene in a particular setting or through particular characterization and development of certain characters, um, characteristics within the characters. So just like I gave you a list of examples of words to describe tone previously, here's a list of words that you can use to describe the mood of a text. Um, once again, I'm not going to go through them. Feel free to stop the video and explore them, but they're quite useful terms in terms of dis describing the mood of a text. So the main thing to take with you here from this video is obviously that there is a distinction between the meaning of tone and mood, uh, and that they're not the same thing. So for instance, if, you, if you're writing a text, the tone could be whimsical, but the mood would then become playful or, or jovial or, or jocund or something. 
but it's not going to be whimsical in terms of, of as a mood as well. Hopefully this has, has helped you to clarify the distinction between these two terms. Obviously, if you have any questions, feel free to, to make a comment below or to talk to me in class. See you later.